A special Stuart 5A steam engine repair, part 4. A look at the engine and boiler in the steamboat. Yesterday I had to have an eye test. This is because I have type 2 diabetes and I have this checked once a year. The problem is that owing to the eye drops that they use, you can't see too well for the rest of the day. Everything you look at is very overexposed, so it's not a good idea to go in the workshop and operate machinery. To make my daily video, I thought it was a good idea to show you these photographs of the now partially dismantled Stuart 5A in the boat. This first shot may be a bit puzzling. You can see the chimney and you can see the piping and a bit of the boiler and the canopy. So where's the engine? Here it is. This is the owner of the boat and he's got his hand on the reversing lever and you can clearly see how the engine fitted into the boat before it was removed for repair. As this is a proper steam engine, not a small model, note the diameter of the piping. The diameter is quite large, because after all a steam engine is a gas engine, and you need to be able to supply a high volume of steam to the boiler, and then exhaust this steam as quickly as possible without any restrictions once it's done its work. In this shot you get the general idea of the boat, it's not the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, it's very practical. The weather in England is never particularly good, well, rarely anyway. So the canopy is quite a good idea. And the layout is quite neat. I wonder what the idea of the gas canister hanging off the back is. Possibly the boat is gas fired, I will ask the owner when I speak to him. The boiler is enclosed in a metal box and it has lots of heat resistant material in there. And the construction is a main central tube and then water tubes that go down from the central tube to a pair of smaller tubes at each side. This gives quite a large surface area and the boiler itself is quite efficient. Once I've finished repairing this engine and it's back in the boat, the owner suggested that I drove down to where it is and had a ride in it. Well, I don't need twice telling about that one. When I do this, I will take my video camera. Over the years, I've built and sailed quite a few model steamboats, but I've never been in a full-size one, so I really do look forward to that event. Here's a close-up of the engine when it was in the boat. The piece of plastic that you see on the side of the engine is just a splash guard to stop the oil from going everywhere. And the tank nearest the camera is the oil tank that supplies the oil to the bearings. And this is where the problem with the engine started. At some stage, some foreign bodies have got into the oil tank and blocked one of the oilways to the front bearing. By the way, when I use the term foreign bodies, this is not a racist comment. It's just the best term that I can think to use to describe what blocked up the oilways. A foreign body is considerably different to a dead body, unless it's a dead body of a fly, or a moth, or a wasp. I'm not 100% sure, but I think this boiler is coal-fired. On the front of it, down at the right-hand side of the picture, there is what suspiciously looks like a firehole door. Here's a magnified view of the same photograph. And you can see from the oil tank there's a pipe that goes to the oil pump, which pumps oil to the bearing. And because there are oil ways drilled from the centre part of the crankshaft through the crank webs to the crank pins, this is how the lubricating oil is supplied to both of the big end brasses. There's a smaller oil tank on the other side, and this is the reservoir for the oil that gets pumped into the cylinders using the high pressure mechanical lubricator. This is an interesting steamboat. It's not as pretty as some that I've seen, but it's very interesting to look at, and very mechanical. And this boat doesn't have a tiller, it has a proper small steering wheel. And I think I can see what looks like a fold-down seat, so the person driving the boat can sit down to do this. And I would assume that the man who drives the boat from this position possibly also stokes the boiler and checks the water level. At the right hand side of the photograph I think you can see what is a check valve or clack valve and the water gauge itself. Here's a shot of the pressure gauge and you can see the red line is at 100 pounds per square inch. Quite a few viewers ask me what is the horsepower of these type of engines. Well a twin Stuart 5A, what's the horsepower of it? I read in a Stuart catalogue somewhere that the specification for a standard single 5A running at 80 pounds per square inch is one and a half horsepower. So I guess this engine is going to be three horsepower at 80 pounds per square inch, and maybe a bit more because it's running at 100 pounds per square inch. In this photograph, again, you can see the water gauge and the check valve or clack valve. 
and the lever on top of the engine itself in this position opens and shuts the cylinder drain cocks. I've shown this view of the engine before on the bench and it's quite ingenious. A chain from a sprocket on the crankshaft drives a larger sprocket which has a cam on the back of it that operates the oil pump for the cylinders and this cam operated lever also operates the oil pump that pumps oil to the main crankshaft. The lubricator for the crankshaft is spring operated. It just puts positive oil pressure into the pipe that feeds the oil to the crankshaft. If you look at the large sprocket at the right hand side of the picture, you will notice that it has a crank pin welded to it with a connecting rod. And this mechanical contrivance operates the water pump that pumps water into the boiler to replace the water used by the engine as it's running. And on the other side is a large hand pump, just in case the one on the left stops working. This steamboat wouldn't win any prizes for being beautiful, but it's very functional and I really look forward to having a ride in it. So that's it for this short tour. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.